Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And in this tutorial, we're going to be touching a bit more on the GUI. And I would. Oh, great. Car alarm. And I would like to show you about list boxes and uh, a little thing I haven't shown you yet, and that's um, default buttons on your form. So, did you know you can actually make default buttons when you click either enter or escape? So, the add button, I could go um, click my form and then find the access access button there it is or accept button click that and you can choose which button you'd like that to be so I'll click add so when you click enter uh, on your keyboard the add will automatically be done there's also a cancel button and so if you have a close or something like that we don't have a close but then the escape key will execute whatever you put for the cancel button but we don't have any so okay so first of all let's uh, look at list boxes so let's create one so um, adjust this just a little bit uh, make it longer. So basically, what's a list box? And this does not show up by default, so don't worry. That's just the name. So I'll change it to list collection. So what is a list box? Basically, it just holds a bunch of different values. And for each value, that you, you can either put them in manually yourself. But um, And I believe you can uh, do that somewhere down here. Um, items, right here. You can actually go to items, and by so default, click enter for each item that you would want there by by default, um, but I don't want to do that. I want to take it take it a step further and actually show you how a user can add items themselves. So we, if we type something in here and click Add, it should be added to our list box. And for each item that we add, it's given an index number starting at zero. So the first item will be zero. The next one will be one, two, three. So basically, the highest index number will be the total number of um, items minus one since it started at zero. So let's figure out how to add. So for the button add, I already added in a try catch. That's all I've done in the code in this video, so don't worry. So let's figure out how to fetch the information. Man, I think I'm going to have to close my window. So string item is equal to text input dot text. Whoops. There we go. So I believe that should all work. And now let's figure out how to actually add it. So we go list collection dot items dot add, and you can put in a number. That's fine. Um, it doesn't give you errors if it's a number. You don't have to use the two string, although I would still recommend it. But let's just put in our variable item. So remember, you can also you know put strings in there too. But let's just put in our variable item. Uh, so I'll click save, and I should actually show you all of these. So list box functions. I spell that right? Okay. So the first one was name of list box dot, so mine was list collection would go right there, dot items dot add and then whatever you want to put put inside the add basically. So I click save. I'll run this. I type in hi. I try adding that. Bye. I try adding that and you know, hello and whatnot. Now, what if we want to be able to fetch how how many items we have in total, or maybe we want this label right here to keep updating that? What you could do is right below this. So I'm actually adding the comment first. Um, name of list box dot items dot count dot to string because since it's a number and we're putting it to a label so you don't always have to use the to string I should probably get rid of this if you're doing like an if statement or a loop or something like that that's checking how many there are you won't have to use the to string but since we're gonna be pasting it to a label so label output dot text we have to use the to string so we'll go list collection dot items dot count dot to string so that should work out for us. Okay, so for every time we add in an item, uh, the total count should go up. So just leaving it blank, it went up one. I put in high, and now it's at the second column. So we have one up there and one down here, but none down here. Um, by, you know, throw in my name. So that's, that's pretty cool, and it keeps changing it. Uh, what's the next thing I would like to show you is probably selected item. So, what if I would like the label to change depending on, well, whatever we've collected? So, double click the list box. So, I'll close this. Double click the list box. 
And so for every item that you change, you can have label output dot text change to whatever is the selected item. So you go list Xbox or Xbox list collection dot um selected not index not index this will um bring uh return the number the index number so go to selected item instead so do i need that to selected item is that better dot to string i can't quite remember if i need that i guess i don't need this I can't remember which one needs the parentheses. I can't remember which ones are properties, which ones are methods. But hey, it's it's all cool. So list box selected item to string. So every time uh, we highlight one of the numbers, it should actually change. But let's just create a bunch first. So hi, enter, by enter, Adam enter. Now if I highlight any of these, the label should change. See, it changed the by, changed the Adam, the hi, wherever you'd like. If we go selected index, then that will actually return the index number. So if I go, you know, hi, bye, see ya, then, okay, so hi is the zeroth index, because it's the first element, bye is the first, and see is the second. So that's proof that it starts at zero, always starts at zero. Okay, so now I'm going to need to throw those ones in there so we're gonna have I'm just gonna go all the way to here and put the dot and selected item okay returns um, string slash number whatever's whatever's in there slash boolean whatever's in there whatever data type um, in selected index uh, okay so the next one will be Whoop. selected index returns the index number of whatever is selected now if you want to do it automatically make sure that code is executed in the in the list box itself uh, so yeah just bear that in mind um, okay so that's returns number of elements in list box and adds an item to list box okay I hope I spelled everything correctly sorry if I didn't uh, okay so I can actually add a space there and a space there so it's easier to read okay, and this just means just put the name of the list box um, right before this dot that's what I mean by that okay so I did that now I would like to show you how to remove and clear so let's figure out how to do that. So go inside the remove, and in order to remove an item, go list collection dot items dot remove at, and then you can rem you can just use the regular remove and remove whatever you'd like. But in order to remove what you have highlighted, you have to type the name of the box again inside the parentheses dot selected index there we go so it's list um, items list the list box dot items dot remove at then the list box again dot select index so it's a little complicated but not too bad so if I type in hi bye these are terrible examples let's think this thing else good morning I don't know let's go to buy so that's number one I click remove and now it's gone. Now that it's gone, notice how this automatically changed to negative one because nothing's being highlighted. So there's nothing to be returned here. So it automatically returns negative one. Basically, negative one always means doesn't exist. So we've we've dealt with that um, before. I forgot what it was, but um, if something doesn't exist, it returns negative one. So that's now two. Adam is now the new number one, and high is still zero. So I get rid of Adam and remove that good morning is now number one so it automatically adjusts it as well now how do you clear the whole thing well that's actually probably the easiest just double click the clear and then we go list collection dot items dot clear and do I need the parentheses there? I think I do there we go so save 
And I think this will be the last one I show you. So let's do the morning, night, evening, something like that. And if you click clear, now they're all gone. Nothing to click there. So that's pretty cool. So I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful for you. I'm going to just add on those last ones that we did there. Uh, we'll be using these for loops, which is in the next one, because it's the easiest way to show you how loops work. So, um, items, whoops, dot, whoops, dot, remove at, and then whatever the index number you would like. So, removes item at selected index number. So you can just manually put in an index number like five, or you can do what I did. Um, the last one was, let's see here, dot items dot clear. And removes all items in list box. Okay, so I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. And um, next time we'll be using this list box again. I'll already have it up. And we'll be learning how to use loops. So I'll see you then.